So how do you protect your case? Well, we talked about taking photos of your car, taking photos of the other car, potentially having a dash camera in your car, potentially getting footage from surveillance video cameras uh, uh, from nearby businesses, okay? But let's talk about what about your injuries? Like how do you document your injuries? So let me tell you the insurance company's favorite argument. The insurance company's favorite argument is that there was a gap in your treatment. That means that the injury happened here and you didn't get treatment until five days later, six days later, right? They call it a, a gap in care. And what they're really trying to say is, we don't know if your injury was really caused by the wreck because you didn't get treatment for five or six days. But the reality is people don't just rush into the emergency room. They usually are in shock. They go home. They feel some pain. They take Tylenol. They see if they get better. Next day, maybe they're in, still in some pain. They take ibuprofen because, you know, they alternate back and forth between different types of over-the-counter over medication. They don't get better. They walk it. They're like, I'm just going to rest for a couple of days. And then when they realize they're really not getting better, that's when they go get checked out. That's normal human nature. But insurance companies will use that against you. So to preserve your rights, the best thing to do is go get checked out immediately. Even if you go to the emergency room and the ER says, oh, muscle strain or sprain strain injury. By the way, sprain and strain are two different words that mean two very different things. But medical terminology sometimes lumps those together and says sprain strain injury. We'll talk about that later. But it's important that you go to the hospital and get checked out. And it's important that if you do go to Walmart or any type of grocery store and you get some medication, take a picture of your receipt. You're preserving the evidence that you had something different happen to you, you felt something different, and you actually took a picture of it. If you have heating pads at your house, take a picture of you using your heating pads. If you apply ice, take a picture of you applying ice. If anything changes due to the wreck, document it. So it's very important to anticipate this insurance company trick of saying you weren't injured because you were not seen. It's also very important to follow up on your treatment. Now the emergency room, we all know, they're not designed for people to go to the ER over and over and over and over again. The E in ER stands for emergency, okay? So they have a fundamental purpose of saving people's lives. And by saving people's lives, they must differentiate between those who are suffering from life-threatening injuries and those who are not. And I hope you're not suffering from a life-threatening injury. But what happens is, because they determine that you're not suffering a life-threatening injury, they usually discharge you immediately. Say you have a sprain-strain injury, say, oh, you look good. They prescribe you some muscle relaxers and you're, they say, you're good to go. But what if you're still in pain? What if it really doesn't improve? Do you go back to the ER? The answer is no. You have to go somewhere else, to a place where you can be seen over and over again to actually get better, like a chiropractor or a physical therapist. Now, if you've gone to a chiropractor before, you know how valuable chiropractic treatment is. But if you've never gone, you may not know where to go. Of course, this is when getting an attorney will really help you, but if not, just Google somebody that's close to your area and start seeking that medical treatment. But there's something extremely, extremely important with respect to medical management and medical care, and that is an MRI. Now, a lot of people, doctors especially, they don't like to say, we're gonna get an MRI immediately. They usually adopt the, let's wait and see approach. But the wait and see approach does not preserve your rights. And an MRI is truly the only tool that can show ligament damage. You see, a strain applies to a muscle. A sprain applies to a ligament. And usually when you have a wreck, it's not about broken bones and it's not about anything that you can see objectively on an x-ray or a CT scan but you can see it on an MRI. 
But the issue is, if you don't get an MRI fairly quickly, that evidence goes away. I like to explain it this way. Let's say, God forbid, somebody punches you in the face and you get a black eye. And you want to be compensated or reimbursed for the pain. You're trying to prove that you had a black eye, but you never take a picture of your face. Well, two months, three months down the road, when you're actually having a hearing or explanation, you're explaining to a person that that other person caused you a black eye, they're going to be like, but I don't see a black eye. Of course, they wouldn't say that because they understand that a black eye fades. But here's the problem. If you didn't take a picture of it, you, you've not preserved it. So an MRI actually preserves if there's any tissue damage in your spine. There's several ways of showing that. There can be swelling in your spine. And swelling happens because there is some type of acute injury. Acute, by the way, acute means that something happened recently. An acute injury in medical terminology is that it happened recently. So getting an MRI is very important. And what's also really important is your MRI being explained to you. So a chiropractor is certainly qualified to read your MRI, but also an orthopedic is very needed to interpret your MRI to see if you need any other type of treatment or care. Hopefully you will get better, but if not, that's why seeing an orthopedic pretty early on will determine whether or not you need more invasive treatment or you are fine with the less or non-invasive treatment, which is going to a chiropractor or a physical therapist. Rachel just posed a good question, which is, do I have to go to a doctor if I'm not in pain? The answer is no. If you're not in pain, you don't go to a doctor. You don't seek medical attention. But pain is anything that is different than what you used to feel. So it's just natural for human beings to diminish what they're feeling. They may say the words discomfort, stiffness, things like that. Guys, pain is a huge umbrella. It's a big umbrella term. If there's anything different from how you're feeling that is distinct and differs from how you were from the wreck, you have the right to get checked out and to be treated for it. And unfortunately, if you do not exercise that right, then that action will be used against you. We talked a little bit about a duty to mitigate your damages, to lessen your harm. Let me just give you an analogy on a duty to mitigate damages. If God forbid your house catches fire and you have a fire extinguisher right there next to you in the kitchen, if you allow that fire to spread from the kitchen to the bedroom, to the living room, and your house burns down, the insurance company can come and say, we're only going to pay for the kitchen because you had a fire extinguisher and you had a duty to lessen your harm. And because you took action that did not lessen your harm, we're not responsible for paying the entire claim of your house. You have a duty to mitigate your damages. Similarly, in a personal injury case, if you do not get checked out, if you do not care about getting the proper care, it's going to be used against you. So that's why it's very important when talking about preserving the value on an injury case to get checked out. Of course, I understand. It is competing with this idea that, well, I, I, don't, want it, I don't want it to be a big deal. I'm not a litigious person. No one is saying that you are. But what we are saying is that you have a duty and right to get checked out. So going to the ER immediately is extremely important. Seeking help from a primary care physician, chiropractor, physical therapist is extremely important. Documenting everything that you have done to lessen your harm is extremely important. And getting a follow-up visit with an orthopedic is extremely important. Those are all the things that one should do if they are in pain if they are in pain. Of course, if you're not in pain, you can dismiss all that and pursue just a property damage claim or anything that you have not been reimbursed for. But if you're in pain, those are the steps that you should take. Now, that's the part on medical management. 
But what about negotiating your claim with the with the adjuster? Because you are now getting treatment, and I am sure you have been getting calls from the insurance adjuster saying, "Hey, can you please update us on what's going on with your medical treatment?" You say, "I'll update you when it's done. I'll update you when I've collected all of my medical records and bills, and I will send them to you." There is no need for you to divulge or disclose or tell the insurance adjuster. You know, you know they're great marketers. You know, all state, you're in good hands. State Farm, like a friendly neighbor, they're not your neighbor. They're a multi-billion-dollar corporation that is designed to make money by getting paid premiums and paying out as little as possible. That's how they make their money. So, don't divulge any information until you have all of your medical records and bills in order to put it in an offer of compromise and send it to the insurance company. You can get all your medical records from those medical providers. You have the right to get them. You have the right to get them in written format or digital format. And at this point, when negotiating with an insurance adjuster, they do not need to be certified. We talked about certification. Certification is only needed and necessary in court. But when you're negotiating with an insurance adjuster, you're sending these documents to the insurance company. They are not necessary, but it is important to send them all the information in one package: the medical records, the medical bills, and photographs of everything that you have. But of course, we will talk in more detail about what an offer of compromise should contain. We talked a lot about. Your medical records and your bills, but of course, if you have anything with respect to who is responsible for causing the crash, that's very important as well. So let's say that there is some type of dispute in responsibility, like you have a witness and that witness isn't listed on the police report, or the witness said something in the police report that they really didn't mean because they misspoke or just English wasn't their first language. So that information on liability needs to be. Collected and preserved, and certainly included in an offer of compromise that we're going to talk about later. So, causation issues, liability issues, and damages issues are all things that you need to be thinking about when preserving and gathering your evidence.